So our next speaker is a web enthusiast. She loves talking about the web and exploring new technologies. She believes in knowledge and knowledge growing with sharing, so she loves to spread the knowledge about front-end. The next speaker is Ashima Ahuja, front-end engineer at Meta. Everybody standing Woo! ovation. Hello, everyone. <laughs> how, how are you guys doing? Yeah. What a great time of the talk, right? 420 for a person especially coming from Amsterdam. <laughs> My friends, great speakers already talked about the re-rendering. Atila spoke and Wouter showed you uh, profiling as well. So I'm going to delve more into the mysteries of re-renders. So let's dive in. So first, let's talk about what is rendering. Rendering is when browser paints a bunch of stuff on the screen to display it to the user. Now, there can be two stages of re-render. First is when the component appears on the screen for the very first time. This is what we call initial render. Another one is when the component was already there on the screen and users started to interact with the component. Now, browser will have to repaint it to show the changes to the user. And this is what we call re-render. Now, let's say this email component was a part of your um, some form, and users started to interact with it. Now, if there is just one re-render of this input component, then it is a necessary re-render, because of course, the user wants to see what he or she typed. But what if users started to interact with it, and not just the input box, but this entire form started to re-render? This is the state of the unnecessary re-render, and there's a scope of optimization. So my name is Ashima. I'm a senior front-end engineer at Fair Harbor. I recently joined Fair Harbor. I was working at Meta two months back. Yeah, I'm a front-end content creator as well. So free of Feel free to follow me on LinkedIn. I create some front-end videos. And if you have any uh, doubts after the talk, feel free to just reach me out, or uh, we can just uh, talk on the outside. Yeah, so uh, let's talk about when does a component de-renders. Now, the first thing is that whenever the state of component changes, then component re-renders. For instance, we have a component, and in this, we have a state variable email. Now, whenever this email change, the component will re-render. Also, when the parent re-renders, all of its children re-render. And this is no matter what. There is a myth that comp uh, child components only re-render when the props change, but actually it will re-render no matter what. Yes, there can be some optimizations we can do to not to make it re-render uh, every time, but Assume whenever the parent will re-render, it will make all the child components re-render as well. Now let's take an example. Let's say we have a component, and we have a count as a state variable, and we have a function increment count, which increments this count. Now we have a button on which, when we click on the button, it increments the count. And we are also have this expensive component, which is a slow component, which will uh, yeah, so whenever this button is clicked, it will re-render the component. And because the parent is re-rendered, so the expensive component will also get re-rendered. Now, if we try to run this and see, I'm trying to click on the increment count button. So the UI is a bit laggy. Let's see what went wrong here. So we can use the profiler. And let's try to uh, run through the profiler and see what is making this component slow. So we run the profiler, start recording, and then I will click on the increment count button. And now if I just click on it once, it's slow, and click on the profiler again, stop the recording. Yeah, so if you can see here now in the yellow, so we have, it's taking 1,000 milliseconds. 
the expensive component is where the problem is. And we need to make sure that why this is re-rendering when, uh, when the count is incremented. So there can be multiple ways to solve this. One of the thing which one of the solution which we can look into is that we can take out this, we can push state down to the children. And what I mean by that is that we can create a separate component counter and move all the code related to the counter into the counter component. We will move the counter as well. Yeah. So now when if we try to run this and increment it, it works pretty decent, right? So we have solved it by pushing state down. And always remember, doing no stuff is better than doing anything. So if you can move state down, that is the best uh, way to solve this problem. However, let's say your product owner comes and he says that, OK, why this expensive component is down? It should be with the counter component. And you want to move it here. So now what you will do is that, OK, you will again move the, uh, move the expensive component back to the counter component. Now again, we are in the same situation, because when the state, whenever we clicked on the button, the component will re-render, and so will the expensive component. So now we again, if we try to run this, and it's again slow. Now there is another way to solve this particular scenario, is that we can choose to pass expensive component as a prop or a children. So for example here, I will pass the expensive component as a children prop. So you can also choose to pass it as a prop and not as a children. And then in the counter component, I will import the children and write children here. So whenever the components are passed as props, it is not re-rendered. So now if we try to rerun this app, it works smoothly. Now let's see there's another way as well to solve this particular problem. So for example, here we, had, we knew that we can use react.memo. And react.memo will ensure that the component only renders when its props are changed. So here, when we click on the button, we know that the state of the component will be changed, and expensive component will get re-rendered. But what if we memoize this component and use memoized component here. So now if we try to run this application again, it will be smooth. And this is because, for now, because we did not have any props, so nothing changed. So memoized component worked. But let's say this memoized component also has some props. Let's say I'm passing name as a prop. And right now it's OK, because the name is a um, it's, it doesn't, it's, a, it's a constant, and it doesn't change between the renders. So far, the memoized component will work as it is. But what if it was an object, and we pass an object to the memoized component as a prop? So in this case, the component will not work because of the referential equality does not hold for the objects. Because the object that was previously the reference is not same as the one as the reference which got created in the next render. So the solution for this is that we will also memoize this, uh, this variable so that it stays same during multiple re-renders. And our memoized component work as, uh, as it is. So if a child component is wrapped in the react.memo, non-primitive props have to be memoized. Now, we have already talked about like memo, memo. So let's talk about uh, use memo and use callback. So now, let's see which one do you think is more uh, performant, like filter items. And another one is in which I have wrapped it in, uh, inside use callback. Now, you can say that it depends which one is more important. But if you just look at this code, uh, the second version is doing actually more computations because it's also calling the function, but with, it's also doing additional computations for the use callback. And similarly, for use memo as well. So we have a list, and the second list, I have wrapped it inside use memo. 
The second version does more computations. So it's not always ideal to wrap everything inside use callback or use memo. So we can avoid some unnecessary use memo and use callback. But these are great. So when should we actually use use memo or use callback? Let's see a bunch of examples. Like for example, if a component is wrapped inside react.memo, then we should use use memo and use callback. For instance, let's take an example of a counter. Let's say we have a dual counter, which has two counters. Counter 1, which is count 1. Then we use increment 1, which increments the count 1. And we have another state variable count 2, and increment 2, which increments the count 2. And we have the two buttons here. Now, even if I click on any of the button, both of them will get re-rendered. And because it's not memoized, so OK, let's use memoize, memoize the count button. But, you, but this will still not work. And why this will not work? Because the increment 1 and increment 2 are functions. And the equality will not hold the same as primitive values. So we will have new instance of it in every render. So that's why we will also need to memo, uh, wrap it inside use callback, both the functions, to make the component work if it was wrapped inside react.memo. So whenever you are wrapping a component inside react.memo, make sure that all the non-primitive props should be memoized or wrapped inside use callback. See, another use case can be in dependency list. Let's say we have a component, and in the use effect dependency array, we have a value. Now, this value, if this is non-primitive, it should be memoized. Why? Because during every render, what React will do, it will check the value of this value variable from its previous render. Now, if this is a non-primitive value, this will always result in false if you have not memoized it. So that's why whenever you pass any non-primitive value in any dependency array of use effect, use callback, use memo, make sure you memoize that value. Yeah, so the value will not be the same, and it, we, we have to memoize it. Another use case in, uh, can be in memoizing slow components. So for React, what is slow? Is basically mounting, remounting, and re-rendering the components. That is slow. So what we can do is that for slow components, we can use you, we can wrap them in use memo and use it like this so that we don't have to uh, re-render it. Another thing where use memo can be used is in computationally expensive computations. Now, these are not the computations like filtering an array or sorting an array. Like, so these are pretty fast, but actual real computations like maybe calculating primes or some animation code. Most of the time, we don't run, to, run into this scenario because most of the com uh, complex co computations are to be done on the back end, not on the front end anyway. But still, if you have really complex computations, then make sure you wrap your functions inside use memo. So in short, like we should not use use memo and use callback in everything, in wrapping every function or every variable. But some necessary use, call, use cases of use memo and use callback are memoize the props if you are using a non-primitive props inside react.memo. Memoize the non-primitive props of dependency arrays. And if they memoize slow components, and also very computationally complex functions. Coming to the improving performance of lists, so let's not forget lists. So we have, uh, let's say we have a list of shoes, and we want to loop over the list, list of the shoes. So here, we all know that if we don't provide the key attribute, we will get this error that you're missing key prop for the element in iterator. And that is because React uses key attribute to identify the elements between the similar siblings. So if we don't provide this, uh, this prop or use tsignore to just silent that eslint warning, then React will default it to index. 
and it will be basically same as providing k is equal to index. But let's say we use mat.random here in the key. Nobody does it, but let's say that we did mat.random. Now what happens is that if initially when the component rendered, the keys, let's say, were random three and four. Now during the next render, the keys will be randomly generated. So React will think that because the keys don't match, React will think it's entirely new elements. So it will destroy the previous elements and remount the new elements, which is not very performant. But what if was the case with the index key, right? We have provided index as a key, and before it was 0, 1, let's say, and after it was, again, after the re-render, it stays the same. So it's good. But still, we are missing one thing, because if the parent re-renders, child re-renders no matter what. So we have to memoize shoe item as well. So this looks great, but there are problems with using index as a key. So, for, uh, like, so far what we saw, it was a static list, right? It was a static list of items. But let's say the list was sortable. And we are sorting this list. Now at same keys, there are different values, and they don't match. So in this case, React will think that it is the same item, but the props have changed. So it will, again, trigger the re-render. But what if we use like IDs as keys? So in this case, like we have different IDs, and now React will identify, even when we sort, it will identify each key, it will map each of the element, and everything works well. So items are recognized accurately, and every item is memoized, so no component is re-rendered. Let's also check in the profiler that how this looks. So we have this sorting list, and I'm going to just click on sort after the profiler. Let's sort this list. And if we go to the profiler, stop the recording, and let's see what rendered. So if we see the key 2 and key 0 have been re-rendered, but none of the keys with uh, none of the elements with keys at IDs got re-rendered. So this is what we can see, that if we use index as keys, and because it was a dynamic list, so we saw that uh, we have unnecessary re-renders. So to have performant lists, make sure never use random keys. You can use array index as a key for static list if your list is not sortable. Even some cases for dynamic lists as well. Like for example, if you have like a paginated list and you know that every item is going to get re-rendered, then also it's OK. But use unique uh, IDs whenever the items are sortable or filtering. Yes, and I know this, was, uh, this is not everything about the re-rendering. There is also some things about the context, how re-renders, how we can avoid re-renders in uh, using context or when we are using hooks when the state changes. So I will be doing like a detailed course on re-rendering as well as covering more topics about the best practices in React. So feel free to uh, register for this course. And uh, for the slides, we have the slides. You can scan the slides. And Thank you for having me here. <laughs>